quiet shopping district is ripped apart by a massive explosion. It was terrible. 33 people are killed. Dozens more are injured. At the Umberto Vidal building, a six-story structure of offices and shops, workers at a shoe store complain of a strange smell. People were trying to go down into the basement to get shoes, to restock the shelves up at the store. Couldn't even get down there. The smell was so bad, they'd get asphyxiated. The San Juan Gas Company sends a technician to check the basement. But the test is negative. November 21st, 8.45 a.m. Employees are coming to work for the day. When suddenly, without warning, the building explodes. In an instant, a building full of workers is turned into a disaster zone. The blast has ripped a 50-foot hole in the building. The lower floors are collapsed into the basement, one floor pancaked onto the other. With the cloud of dust and the smell of destruction in the air, one burning question was on everyone's mind. What caused this disaster? The building was blown from the, from the inside out. The building was pretty much in shambles. While bomb experts from the ATF checked for explosives, NTSB investigators began the search for other suspects. We don't rule anything out. We try to hunt for the evidence and let the evidence take us where it needs to go. Investigators turned to the witnesses who reported smelling gas. Where did the gas come from? Explosive methane gas can build up in sewer systems. And the pipes owned by the San Juan Gas Company carried a propane air mix. A hazardous fuel could come from almost anywhere. Bottled propane was ruled out, but gas pipes buried in the street were still suspect. Beneath the street, they discovered an astonishing labyrinth of leaky pipes. Under the street, we found sewer lines, we found water lines, we found electric lines, we found ducts for telephone lines, we found ducts with nothing in them. It was a snake pit of potential danger. The NTSB investigators worked their way through the maze, pipe by pipe. The leak was a block up the street from the Vidal building. Could this be the critical clue? That was the largest flow rate leak, and that happened to be the one that was closest to the Umberto Vidal building also. City records revealed that a year earlier, a water pipe was installed directly beneath the leaky gas line. We found that the gas pipe had been undermined when the water pipe was installed and it hadn't been properly supported with backfill after the construction took place. The victims blamed the San Juan Gas Company, but when they filed lawsuits, there was a new twist. San Juan Gas was owned by none other than the Enron Corporation, and Enron fought back with an army of their own experts. They insisted that gas from their pipe did not cause the explosion. Instead, they blamed sewer gas. The victim's attorneys turned to the experts at Aptec Engineering to prove their case. They're saying, number one, the gas could not reach the basin because the soil was not porous enough, uh, basically impervious to fluid flow, and that the concrete wall was also uh, a perfect barrier. But investigators pointed to the pipes they discovered buried beneath the street. The snake pit of pipes created a veritable highway for the fugitive gas. There's actually an open area around the pipe, between the pipe and the soil, and the gas can just travel right down around the pipe. And that propane made its way in different directions, but one direction it made its way to was the Humberto Vidal basement, which was the only basement in the neighborhood. This was an important clue, one that could prove their theory. Using dry ice vapors, forensic engineers showed how it was possible for propane to build up to the dangerous levels that led to the explosion. This is exactly analogous to how the propane would behave when it entered the Humberto Vidal basement. Heavier than air, it will sink to the bottom, hit the floor of the basement, and spread out laterally. 
But Enron continued to insist that the deadly blast was caused by methane sewer gas. And they were saying that there was a way for the sewer gas to get from the pipe out on the street into the building and reach combustible levels and then explode and do the kind of damage that, we, that was observed. The Enron theory was that methane gas collected in a false ceiling in the mezzanine of the Umberto Vidal building and exploded. There were two scenarios, one that there was an explosion upstairs and one that there was an explosion down in the basement. The case could go either way. To prove the explosion was in the mezzanine, Enron experts pointed at the walls around the basement stairwell. Months after the explosion that destroyed a six-story building and killed 33 people, investigators and experts from Enron returned to the basement of the ravaged building. The engineering detectives made an alarming discovery. Mr. Zimmerman and the gentleman from Enron looked up toward the sky because it was all open and they saw on the bottom side of a concrete beam the imprints of shoes. Shoes that had been stored in the basement were blasted upward by the exploding propane gas. The shoe soles had scraped on the bottom of the beams as they exited the basement, and so it was another obvious confirmation that the explosion had occurred in the basement. To reconstruct the scene, the forensic engineers turned to sophisticated computer animation to show exactly what happened during the explosion. What we had to do was recreate this explosion uh, as accurately as possible, given the information that was given to us. So we know that the final position of the truck was upside down on the other side of De Diego Street. So the building was not something we just made up. It was actually created from hard data, everything we could get our hands on. To accurately recreate the power of the blast, they searched through thousands of photographs, carefully matching debris back to where it came off the building. As an example, what we have here is the roll-up door on the side of the building. It flies out and lands on top of a car. And we did this uh, many times, uh, dealing with many different uh, parts of this building. And uh, the final result, of course, is this overall explosion. A clearer picture of the disastrous propane explosion began to emerge. First, a plastic pipe was damaged. That was caused by the water company having dug up the street to install a water pipe. And they put the water pipe under the propane pipe and they didn't backfill it properly. Over time, the pipe bent and cracked, leaking a cubic foot of propane per minute. With that pipe, there was no doubt there was more than sufficient fuel. The gas then flowed along pipes under the street. From there, it was able to seep into the basement itself uh, through cracks and through uh, other piping and so forth that left that particular area. Finally, enough of that had filled the area until it reached a point where it could have ignition, and then it was set off. Obviously, it was just an accident waiting to happen, and we had the explosion. The spark that ignited it may have come from an air conditioning unit or the elevator motor. To investigators, the exact source was irrelevant. An explosion was only a matter of time. We were able to determine that the amount of propane and air that accumulated and ignited in the Umberto Vidal basement was equivalent to about 300 pounds of dynamite. At the 11th hour, Enron decided to settle with the victims of the blast. I believe in my heart that, that they knew right from the start that they were responsible for this accident. But it took them years, literally, to fess up. It took hundreds of investigators countless hours to solve the mystery. This was one of the hardest investigations that I've ever been on. Thanks to their dedication, following recommendations made by the NTSB, the poorly maintained pipeline system was shut down. Given the way the system was operated, I think one of the good things is, is most of the gas system on the island was abandoned. It was not being operated safely, so I think the people of Puerto Rico are far better protected by the smaller gas system that's operated there. 